Hi, I realise that I've been presenting various articles and blogs on Process Monitor, but I haven't actually explained the background or some of the basic capabilities of the tool. So the tool we're talking about is Microsoft Process Monitor. It's available on the Sys Internals pages of Microsoft and you can download it totally free of charge. Um, and it's an excellent tool to get a view on the internal workings of an application or, or actually the operating system itself. Here we have an application process and it makes calls to the registry. It makes file I.O. type calls, calls via the WinSock interface for TCP and UDP uh, traffic and also calls to the operating systems to create and uh, destroy processes and threads. And all of those events are visible in a process monitor trace. What we don't see is an application's window events. So where an application updates the window by writing to the window, or we receive the application receives keystrokes and mouse movements, etc. None of those events are visible in a process monitor trace. Now that can be slightly annoying or limiting from um, the point of view when we're tracing on a client PC, but of course when we're tracing on a server these are things that probably don't bother us that much. So aside from the application making these calls, the system kernel also makes calls to its own internal system services and again it creates uh, threads. Um, it uses the WinSock interface or it uses its own, um, it's called the WinSock kernel interface I think. Um, it does its own file I.O. and also it needs access to the registry. So when I say kernel down here what I'm really talking about is typically it's the NTOS kernel.exe executable. Uh, the kernel can actually vary depending on a few um, startup parameters but typically that would be the executable. And of course it's supporting DLLs. So we have user mode activity and we have kernel mode activity and we see those all in the trace. So let's actually start process monitor. Okay, now you can see that immediately upon starting Procmon, we're actually already recording. And we're seeing 16 or 15% 15 of the events that have been recorded. And that's because Procmon has default filters set. Um, and so if I hit the reset button, I'll get the default filter um, settings. And they filter out some of the event types. So the filter in this case is behaving like a display filter in Wireshark. But what we can do is, let's stop that. I'm going to erase all of the filter events. Then I'm going to switch on a particular setting, drop filtered events. So let's switch that on so you see that's now ticked. And let's start another trace. And now what we see is we're seeing a much higher proportion. Almost all of the events are being displayed in the window. And the reason is because this option, drop filtered events, is acting like a capture filter in Wireshark. So in fact, we only capture the events that obey the filter. I'm not quite sure why there's a difference between these numbers. It could just be that it takes while, a while for the uh, window to catch up with the uh, number of events captured. But um, we have obviously a heavily filtered trace here. So one further thing I need to show you is that the backing file, in fact you can see it says backed by virtual memory down here, we're actually writing into virtual memory which of course eventually will get paged out into the page file system. Now you can change that, so we can change that to be a named file um, and in fact I can change it to be uh, I've actually got 
I've got a USB drive connected here, so uh, I can just let's just put procmon o1.pml. Uh, that will take place next time I capture, so I stop to raise all of those, start again, and now you can see I'm actually writing the trace entries out to uh, my USB drive. In the next video we'll take a look at how we interpret this data and how we can filter it. So, I'll see you soon.